Welcome back. We are about to get intermediate workout number nine going. Make sure you have your workout started on your fitness tracker and let's begin. Okay, we are taking it down to your high plank position. I'm gonna show you the modification first because this one is gonna be very challenging. So your modification is gonna be from the hands and the knees and we're going for those bird dogs. So the arm and the opposite leg are reaching out, coming down and then alternating to the other side. For this intermediate workout, we're gonna take the knees off the ground, but of course, if you feel like you need to work on that modification, stick with that for now. So we're only gonna do 10. Really, really important to keep those hips tucked. We're getting a little more challenging here for the last two of this series. Ready, here we go. So go ahead and bring it up to your high plank. We are going arm and opposite leg coming up and back down. We're going 10 total, two, three, nice long reach, four, five, keeping that lower back straight, six, seven, eight, last two, nine, and and good. Okay, shake those wrists out. Let's stay right here actually. I'm gonna grab my two five pound weights. We're gonna go for kneeling halos. So halo rotations. We're gonna take both of the weights and we're gonna get a big wrap around the top of the head. We're gonna go alternating directions for 60 seconds and your time starts now. So keeping the elbows lifted away from my body. As I'm coming around, I wanna to try to avoid letting the elbows come down and drop close to my body. And let's alternate one direction and the other direction. I like doing this from a kneeling position because it just takes away that element of the lower body so we can really focus on that rotation in the core. As we're going around, this getting into the shoulders, getting into your core. Good. Lots of shoulders, still maintaining that tuck in the hips, holding that belly button in towards your spine. Here we go. You wanna find a nice, just kind of pivot around Coming around, finding a nice flow. Last three, two, and one. All right, go ahead and set your weights down. Let's switch to your heavier weight option. Now for this one, we're actually only going to do eight on each side because technically one repetition is two lunges. So we're gonna stick to eight repetitions, a lateral lunge out to the side, and then a big step back into more of a lunge runner. So I'm not gonna set that back knee down. So I'll opt to move to the side of my mat here. Chest is nice and tall. We're going lateral lunge out to the side. One weight on either side of my knee. Coming up, little balance if you can, or just a light touch. And then we're going straight back. My back knee is nice and straight. Coming up, and that's one. Inhale down and out. <sighs> Exhale in that push off or you can just lightly touch the toe, that's fine. Two. Three. Four. So we're working both legs here. Chest stays tall, shoulders stay back. Five. Six. Big stretch on the inside of the straight leg here. Seven. Last one. Eight. And eight. Good job. 
Let's switch it over to the other side. Here we go. Stepping out and up, big step back. Float that foot back, back knee straight. Two. Three. As you step out for this lateral, lateral lunge, make sure toes are pointed forward. Ankle, knee, hip on one side, lined up. Five, strong push off. Good, check in with that posture, shoulders rolled back. Six. Seven. Good, last one. Eight and eight. Awesome, okay. I'm gonna stick with these heavier weights. We're gonna go split stance rows for this one. One foot forward, one foot back. Heel high on that back foot. 12 on one side, 12 on the other side. Here we go. Big exhale on that pull. Three, four, five. Nice squeeze back in together in the shoulder blades. Seven, eight, Ten. Here we go. Two more. Eleven and twelve. Good. Shake it out. Switch the legs. Keeping that nice straight angle in my back, all the way down to the back foot. One, two. Bringing those weights all the way back by my rib cage. Three, four, five, six. Nine, here we go, last three. 10, 11, and 12. All right, go ahead and set your weights down. We have made it to your cardio portion. We are going to stick with a single leg and we're gonna go single leg high skips. So I'll show you one first. We're here, soft bend in the knee, and then just as if we were gonna take off into a skip, arm and opposite leg. And then the fun part is sticking that landing at the bottom. So we're gonna go 10 on one leg and then we'll switch and we'll go 10 on the other leg. Ready? Here we go. Little bend in the knee, exhale. Stick the landing. Four, very tricky. Five, keep your eyes on one spot. Six. Eight and 10. Switch the leg. Here we go. Coordinating arm and opposite leg here. Three, five, six, eight, nine. Last one. 10, good. Okay, so your single leg balance is gonna look very similar to that, but we're gonna take the jump out of it. So let's take it back to the side that you did originally for those high skips. Keeping your posture, we're gonna take the opposite hand, just bending the knee to come down and find your knee with your hand, and then bringing it back up to the top. So we'll go 10 on one leg, 10 on the other leg, if you feel like you can go lower while maintaining your posture, go for it. We just wanna make sure that we're not dropping the chest in order to reach lower. So really focus on using the legs, bending through the knee, staying nice and tall. Okay, ready, here we go. So coming down, find your knee. If you can, find your toes and all the way up to the top, squeezing that glute. You can go the middle of your shin whatever works for you today. As long as you're staying balanced, keeping a soft bend in that knee at the top. Here's 
five. Doing really good, just nice and slow and controlled. Six. Seven. Nine, one more, and 10, perfect. Shake that leg out. All right, let's take it to the other side. Reaching with the opposite hand, here we go. Coming down, you can play, just find that knee first, and then each repetition you can work on getting a little lower. Maybe start to find the middle of your shin. Three this freehand, whatever you want to do with it to help you balance. Four. Good. Five. Keeping that posture, imagine like there's a wall right in front of you. Six. Last two, here we go. Nice and steady, nine. One more, and 10. Okay, good job. Definitely feeling those legs after that one, after those last two. Okay, let's take it down. We'll give the legs a little rest. Get into some core work here. So we're gonna stick with those straight leg raises. In the previous workout, we added the hip raise. We're gonna stick with that hip raise, but now we're gonna add a little corkscrew rotation. So we'll go 10 to one side, 10 to the other side. And here's what it's gonna look like. So hands are wherever they need to be to help you support your lower back. We're coming up with the legs, adding a rotation in the hips on the way up, and then coming back down, okay? So we'll stick to one side. Sometimes that rotation is a little tricky to get a feel for. 10 on one side, 10 on the other side. Here we go. So we're coming up, up. Two. Nice job. Breathing out on the way up. Eight. Nine. Last one to this side. 10. Take that rotation the other way now. Twist the hips. Come back down to the center. Nice work. So we're actually going to bring it up back onto your feet for this one. No bridges for this workout. We're gonna work the hamstrings and the glutes doing a Romanian deadlift. So let's go ahead and grab your heavier dumbbells. And when I say heavier dumbbells, I only mean heavier dumbbells if you have the proper form. This one is very, very important to keep the form because this is how a lot of people in their everyday life injure their lower backs by bending over with their back rounded and then they go to lift something heavy and they strain something in their back. So we'll go over the form first really quick before we add the weights to it. Slight bend in the knees. I want to stick my chest out, bring my shoulder blades back in together and then it's just a hinge forward at the hips. So as if I was going to, if you had your hands full of groceries or something and you're pushing your hips back to close the car door, you can imagine that. So we're here, shoulders are holding back in together. My hands are gonna stay close to the legs and I'm just taking a hinge forward. You should start to feel a stretch in the back of the hamstrings. If you start bending your knees too much, then it just turns into a squat or more of a powerlifting deadlift. We wanna keep the same bend in the knees, get the stretch in the hamstrings, 
back stays super, super straight. Follow through with that hip tuck, squeeze the glutes at the top, okay? So let's go ahead and add weight to it. If you're unsure of your form, go really light with the weight or just stick with body weight. Maybe grab a mirror to check your back, make sure it's nice and straight. We'll go for 12 of these, okay? So chest is tall, shoulders are pulled back. Weights are gonna stay close to my legs. So I'm not letting that weight move far away from my body. Just to the knees here is great. Bring it back up to the top. Follow through with that hip tuck, glute squeeze. Inhale down. Exhale up. Maintaining a slight squeeze back in together in the shoulders. Six, so I don't want to let go of the shoulders. Seven. Imagine like you're holding onto a pencil between your shoulder blades. Eight. Nine, let's go last three. One more. And 12. Good job. Set your weights down. Let's take it onto your back one more time. We're gonna go for bicycle crunches. This time, we're gonna go for a shoulder flexion option. So I'm gonna hold my arms up overhead, wanting to pull my shoulders down to the ground, but I'm gonna maintain the crunch with my abdominals to counter that pull. We're gonna go for 60 seconds. In, let's see, wait for my watch to catch up here. In three, two, one, here we go. So arms are reaching overhead, shoulders are lifted, my chin is away from my chest. And then we're going for those bicycles. Again, you have the option to kick those feet up a little bit higher for a little bit less resistance or you can tap the toes down a little bit closer. The really challenging part of this is the arms that are wanting to pull you down to the ground. Keep those shoulders lifted. If it feels like it's too much, bring the arms forward slightly. You can even start right here and then slowly start to work the arms back. See where your threshold is. 15 seconds. You can even hold your hands together at the top, kind of like you're diving into a swimming pool. Good. Last five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Ooh, take a deep breath. That one kind of takes the wind out of you a little bit. Okay, last one. We're gonna take it down onto your stomach. We're gonna just stick with body weight for this one. You're going to get kind of full spectrum back on this, maybe even into the side of your back a little. So we're gonna go to that prone position, stomach down, still the same form for the lower body. The toes are tucked, knees are lifted, glutes are tight. You have the option to keep your forehead rested on the mat if you want. And then the arms are just gonna sweep back and forth kind of like a windshield wiper. The range of motion will determine the intensity, determined by you. And let's just go for 12 of these. Forehead down, arms are reaching all the way up to the top. We're gonna sweep over to one side, one and two, three, four, five, six, Keeping the arms lifted by your ears as high as you can. Eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Come down and relax. Very nice work. All right, that is the end of workout number nine. We only have one workout left in this series. If you feel like you need to go back through review the previous workouts, but most of all, have fun. Make sure you're mastering these movements 
and I will see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this workout, click right here to get another great workout. And if you want something a little different, click over here for this workout.